Noel Coots, who's on the line now. G'day, Noel. G'day. How Hi. Are you doing? Good of you to come on the show. Yeah. You're really good, enjoying the warm weather today. Yeah, oh, yeah we like that, don't we? We I do. do. I do too. Yeah. You've got an interesting... I like when we get through the longest day. Once we've got... Once we, a shortest day. Once we've got through the shortest day, it all just starts getting better. It's all downhill from there, I reckon. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I think yeah. it's, it's going to be a good summer and... I was going to say yeah. ab about your life, you know, how interesting it is and you, how you've mixed, you, you've, you've broken up your year with six months in Poland and six months in New Zealand. But uh, maybe before we get into the meaty stuff about, um, about uh, you know, your, your existence, why don't we treat ourselves to that song, uh, which is about our very own Stewart Island. Are you up for a, a few bars of that uh, down the phone? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'll just play it down the phone. It's called... Kia Rakiora. Rakiora is the, the Maori name for Stewart Island. It means land of the growing skies, as far as I know. I lived down there on my boat for a while. I got a big old schooner. And I wrote this one morning. Beautiful. It was early fog this morning. Now it's cleared away. A gentle breeze is blowing in. Across the bay. And a bell bell from a flag which calls to greet the brand new day. Kia ora, Rocky Orton. Squizzy's in his fishing boat, heading out to sea. He looks in my direction and he gives away to me. Just right now, there ain't no place on earth that I would love to be. Kia ora, Rakiora. Tune is in the general store. The ferry's coming in with goods on board and always more delivered in a bin. I catch a ride and say good day. She greets me with a grin. You're on island time now. Some visitors go walking past with packs upon their backs. I don't know where they come from, but they're here to walk the tracks. I'll probably see them in the pub the night that they come back. Kia back to your Another day in paradise. I hope we don't get rain, but if we do it, Okay, too, the sun will shine again, and the birds will sing a song of joy while the sea whispers your name. Kyoto, Rakiora. It's early fog this morning, now it's cleared away, and the gentle breeze is blowing in across the bay. And that bell bird from a flax bush calls to greet the brand new day. Kiora, that Kiora. Kiora, that Kiora. Kiora, that Kiora. Ah, that was just great, Noel. Thank you so much. <laughs> You come out down the phone, all right? It, it, you know, I, it, it was perfect. Oh, God. Amazing technology, eh? Great it's, age we live in. <laughs> yeah. It probably makes us sound hokey, but we're waiting on a on a, on a second mic, and uh, we'll get you in again, and you can do it in the studio, which will be even better. Uh, but, no, I oh, liked wow. I liked the crackle of the phone. It, it added to the atmosphere of the song. Yes. Oh, good. Good. It's it's very nice. Yeah, it's still on it. It's a... It's a, a wonderful place, a different part in a different part of the world, all right? Yeah. It's I, was, I, I had my boat down there. I've got a big old schooner. And it's a 48 foot with a four foot bowsprit, 52 feet in a marina you pay for. And it's, uh, it was built with a piano on board in 1920. So it's over 100 years old. And it's got all that beautiful cowry and all that beautiful woodwork on it that they did 100 years ago. Yeah, it was lovely. It's, it's so nice, and I mean, you've lived on that boat for a while at times, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I lived on, yeah, I lived on it um, and just sort of travelled around the country a bit on it, really, and played gigs here. Now, I had a wonderful summer up in the um, uh, 
up in the Marlborough Sounds, living on the boat and just playing the boat access only places. That was that was pretty good. I like that. Been playing um, playing little yeah. little gigs in uh, in various yeah, yeah. out of the way yeah, spots. Yeah. yeah, good for you. Out of the way spots. Yeah, just dr- drift into a into a bay and pick up a moor and take your dinghy ashore and you know places at Fernow Lodge and Punga Lodge and places like that. You know they have have great atmosphere and the people you know people that move around on boats. Everybody's the same. It doesn't matter if you have the freshest boat or, the, or a dinghy. You know we're we're all on the same level here. That was great and I, I loved it. I loved it and. Uh, they paid me and fed me, and we all lived happily ever after. Well, this is the thing. Could, could you see yourself doing that again this summer? Not this summer, no, because I I made a mistake. I put the boat up on um, Lake Wakatipu because I was I I had it on down on Stewart Island, and then I went away with the New York Opera Company um, through uh, Russia and Poland and Estonia and Latvia and Greece and places like that. And I left the boat down there, and um, I met this lovely lady um, on the, somewhere on the way. And um, then I started, I actually got married in Poland and Warsaw. And um, I still had my boat on Stewart Island, so I was going back and forward and back and forward. And I've got a lot of family around the Wakatipu, so I ended up um, putting it up on the lake, and, which was not really the right thing to do, but that's where she is now. Mm. Because you've got to get it back to the ocean before you start your touring around. You do. You do, and there's really nowhere to go on the lake. And everybody says they'd like to go sailing with you, but when you say, okay, let's go today, oh, I've got to change my library book, oh, I've got to mow my lawns, or, you know, I've got to, whatever it is. <laughs> and it's, it's not the same, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, like you know. Those excuses. I have to pick up my suit from the dry cleaners. That's right, yeah. It's been there a long time. <laughs> haven't, haven't they heard of that saying, uh, Carpe Diem? Apparently not. No. Yeah, I'd, I'd go on your boat. Would you? Oh, well, Too right. You go, then. Especially if you sang, uh, if you stopped in a little bay and pulled out the guitar, and uh, that would be inc- <laughs> incredible, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, well, like I say, she was built with a piano on board in, in 1920. It's not there now. Someone took it off. They'll go to hell for that. But they will. If you wanted to have a look at it, She's called Lady Sterling, S-T-E-R-L-I-N-G. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a thing on YouTube, if you went Lady Sterling uh, Schooner or something like that, you'd get it. And she's she's a lovely old girl. Oh, she sounds great. We should get to our first song, actually. And it's kind of about travelling, which is something you've done a lot of. You've chosen the Sour Westers as your first song, Noel. Uh, what appeals to you about the song? Uh, it's a song... Dean Hetherington, uh, the Hetheringtons are a great family that live up in Hokitika. And Dino came and lived with me when he was quite a young guy, actually. He calls me uncle. And uh, he's a great guitar player, and he wrote it, and uh, it's his, he sings it, and he plays beautiful guitar on it. And um, he's got, um, uh, what's her name, uh, Ali Cook on there with him, and um, Leon Ryan. Liam Ryan. And mm. Liam Ryan is uh, from the Nights. He's a real clever bastard. It's a nice, it's, it's a good song, yeah. I'm going up to play with those guys next weekend. Next, I think, yes, on the 7th. Sim- no, the, yeah, something like that. The 9th, around there. Whereabouts? Like that, April, uh, in Ross, in Hokitika. Fantastic. Ross, just out of Hokitika. There's a pub in, out just out of Ross, <coughs> in Ross. Which it's, it's a, a real old pub, and I think it's one of the best pubs in the world. It's great. It's great. It's really good. The people are really good. You know, they like me out there, and I get to play my own songs. A lot of you know what it's like, Lee. And a lot of the time you get out and play, and everybody play it really good. One place we home Alabama, place we home Alabama, play wagon, we play wagon, we play wagon, place we home Alabama. And you know, you, if you write songs, you sort of if the universe gives you songs, you should play the bloody thing, shouldn't you? I, th- I think, I think so. so. I think so too, yeah. es- especially someone so as there. gifted as you, Noel. Honestly, great songs you've got. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. No, they are because yes. because they're, I don't know, they're of a place and, and you can, you're authentic, you know, you, you can tell that you mean you mean what you're talking about, you know, what you're singing about. Yeah, I don't really, I'm not very good at I Love You, Your Eyes Are Blue songs. I haven't done too many of those. But I, I've done, I, I have, I've done a, a Sort of a, I, I wrote a song which is half Polish, half English for my my sweetheart. I got married in Poland. I mean, I never saw that coming. Isn't Bloody that amazing? <laughs> it, I'll tell you what's really amazing, all right? 
I was living on my boat in Wellington, just in Chafers Marina. My mother had just died. It wasn't long after a woman that I was made to love and had buggered off with another guy. Mm. I didn't have anything much in the way of gigs. And an old friend called me up and said, look, I'm with an all-black opera company. There's one white guy in it. His father's sick. And he has to go home. Can you do it? And we're doing um, a tour down under, you know, in New Zealand, Australia. And I said, I've never sung opera in my life. And she said, look, it's not a singing role. It's an acting role. And I said, I don't know. And she said, quite untight, look, you've got a good southern accent. You look as mean as hell, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll just fit the part perfectly. So that's what yes, happened. I, I had a southern accent. I played the, I played the mean old southern shit, just picking on in colored people. You know, yeah, it was, um, and then, then she called me up. Well, I was sounding up the west coast of the States, and she called me up and said, we're doing a tour of Russia and... Uh, and Poland and Estonia and Latvia and Greece and do you want to come? And I said, no, I want to stay home and watch rugby. It'll be on TV. Of course I want to come. Stupid question. <laughs> stay home and watch rugby. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I'd, I'd never even been to New York and, you know, rehearsals in New York in a, in a uh, building that was just teeming with, uh, I don't know, actors and dancers and TVs and all that sort of stuff and, and then next thing we're in um, St. Petersburg, right up in the north of Russia with a with an all black opera company. And Unreal. that was really inter- really interesting because the Russians don't like black people, do they? No. And they spit at them and call them nigger and they don't like that. And the Russians don't like Americans either, do they? But American and and when I joined, this woman said to me that there is she said, Now, Danny, Danny. 75% of the women are heterosexual and 75% of the men are homosexual. So they have a good time. So, <laughs> well, a whole lot of black American homosexual opera uh, maybe guys going around in, in Russia, oh man. It didn't work out too well, I tell you. Oh, for they wouldn't, goodness they wouldn't, sakes. They wouldn't do anything for the company. They wouldn't help at all. It was, it was really quite interesting, yeah. What a what a crazy uh, episode in your life! Uh, but I'm sure it was very entertaining and, and interesting, and I'm quite quite jealous you got to go to such a such a brilliant city, St Petersburg. Yeah, but we played in in great theatres too, and with great orchestras. I mean, we played in in uh, in um, Moscow. I played with the Moscow Philharmonic, which is supposed to be one of the best orchestras in the world. But then we went through Belarus, which was run by a bloody gangster and all got ripped off. And then we went to um, Poland, to Warsaw. And then Warsaw, we played with the Polish National Opera Orchestra, which is like when everybody's there, it's a 110-piece affair. And everybody's at the top of their game. I mean, really at the top of their game. And the theater has, has got the biggest stage all over Europe. And it's this huge old theater. And it's all a massive gold and red velvet and... Uh, it's fabulous, fabulous theatre. Um, and then the, the maestro said, oh, these guys are better than the Russians. And, and um, on the last night of the season, um, somehow I got found myself at a, a little party in the flutist dressing room. With, with the, it was, you know, um, the, season, the opera was going into recess. And mm. I met this little girl and we just talked for about three hours. And... and um, no, no, I went away. I went, I'm a sailor, and I went sailing in the Firth of Fife on a classic boat regatta, which was fantastic. And then we started emailing each other, and she said, if you ever find yourself back in, Mos- in Warsaw, come and see me. Mm. So when the opera finished in, in Estonia, on the way back to New York, I stopped off in, in Warsaw and for 10 days and fell in love. Oh, <laughs> what a great story. It's true. Yeah. And it's a yeah. true story. So we've got a song yeah. about a girl next, and this leads quite nicely into it. You've chosen Steve Earle, and this is, I know this song. It's really great, isn't it? I suppose yeah, it's a great song. not much more to say yeah. about it. Would you want to add anything about your choice? Um, this lady this, that, I, that I married, Alice, she's a flutist, and we play this sometimes when we play together. So I like it. I like Steve Earle. He's a good writer. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I, I get why this uh, resonates with you, Noel. <laughs> yeah, go away, girl. It's great. Yeah. Are you, know, you on the island? 
Sorry? You're on the island now. Are you on the island now? No, I'm, a, I'm actually in a studio at Gibston, but it would be lovely to be on the island now. It's a high time yes. I got back to that part of the world. It's, it's magic. It is. Mm. Yeah, it's a special place. Mm. So, you know, a lot of people know you around these parts, but I think some people might be surprised at just how much you've done over the... You know, maybe if they're listening in other parts of the country, but, I mean, you had... Uh, you had a lot of fun with the band called Custer's Last Band, which you used to play play in Queenstown with, didn't you? Um, until the early two oh, two thousands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. was that was that was a great band. I had um, Kev Thomas playing drums, and of course Kev died, and uh, Brian Harley he was playing guitar, and I reckon he's uh, he was world class. He really was. And then he just got a sort of a block, and he couldn't do it anymore. He just got a sort of it was it, too much pressure. I don't know what it was, Lee. And, mm. and my youngest son, Joseph, was playing bass with me. And oh, I love Joseph. I love my boys. I, I'm very lucky. I've got a great family around mm. me. You know, I've got mm. a lot of them too. And well, I've got four this is adult good. Children. <laughs> I've got four adult children, and I've got um, nine grandchildren. And eight of them live around the Wakatipu, which is why I'm here. <laughs> that you, you know, I mean, like it's it's great. Yeah, that's and, cool. Uh, and Jessie, of course, inherited your, your fantastic voice, your daughter. She's a brilliant singer. Yeah, she's a better singer than I'll ever be. But, yeah, she's, um, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's good, isn't it, to have that sort of stuff around. And, oh, it's the best. You know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And, uh, but I think you maybe get what you, what you deserve, I don't know. And, uh, obviously, they know that you really care so so it's it's great you're all it, it is it is unusual though isn't it these days often families are separated by lots of distance a lot of children go overseas and don't come back and that's pretty tough yeah, yeah. pretty hard no we're i'm i'm really rich i'm really rich in my heart i'm poor in my pocket but i'm rich in my heart i'm not actually poor in my pocket for god's sake we're, we're in the top five percent of the world or something 95 percent of the world you know we're We've always got enough to eat and shoes and clothes and gas and cars and all the shit of it, you know. It, it's we do pretty good out here. I mm. reckon we do anyway. Mm, it's yeah. fantastic. And also, you know, it, it's interesting because you appeared in Xena, didn't you? How did that come about? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I did. I I did a few of those sort of things. The best one I did was I played Captain Cook in a German television documentary. That was a good one. And I got to sail on Endeavour and I got a trip to Tahiti. And, of course, being a sailor, it just served me fine. Oh, perfect. Um, and, and Cook discovered more on, of the world in 10 years than they had found in the last 1,000 years. And in those days, they believed in Europe that there had to be another, another big chunk of land at the bottom of the earth otherwise the earth would spin off its accent and they sent him down to find the great um, southern continent and when he came back and all he found was New Zealand they thought that was a bit piss poor but it's really <laughs> interesting do better, <laughs> do better next time sort of thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. go uh, find yeah. something bigger and there are any little islands yeah. what, what are you thinking bigger down there yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now you've got eclectic taste because this next track you've chosen by Bowie is uh, is mm -hmm. one that Dale Gold, um, who who I play with sometimes, not enough lately. I'm hoping to see him more often in the future. But Dale loves the song, and this is "I'm Afraid of Americans." But I'd never heard of it before until he told me about it. How did you discover it? Because it's a bit obscure. It is a bit obscure. I went and saw um, David Bowie's. Um, band members are a whole bunch of people who had played with David Bowie over the years, and they did, they did this wonderful show in Christchurch. I forget what it was called, and one of these guys did this. I'm afraid of Americans, and at the time Donald Trump was ranting and raving, and I thought, "Ooh, this is pretty relevant, pretty powerful." Of course, now we've got Nancy Pelosi going around here, sticking fingers and poking at the Chinese and things like that. Jeez, I am afraid of Americans. They're a <laughs> warmongering bunch. They really are. They've been at war almost constantly for the last 70 years, saving the world. Yeah, right, sure. Yeah, save there's your own not, country first, eh? There's another nation on earth that, you know, starts wars like they do. They love it. Yeah. They love it. I'd have to, I'd have anyway, to agree with you. I'm afraid of Americans and... and uh, David Bowie does a great job with us. He was a clever bugger, wasn't he? Eh? Oh, I miss him a yeah. lot. Let's play this track now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I, oh, okay. I really liked it. It was good. It was good, yeah. 
What What's the one yeah. you thought we were going to play? How different I, is it? It was, it was just a bit less, a bit less coloured in than that. No, that was very, very good. I like, well, you know, David Bowie. Yeah. A bit less produced, yeah. you mean, highly produced than that one? But, uh, yeah, 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 that was pretty well highly produced. That's the way I'm putting it, yeah. Mm, but, um, yeah, meaty. <laughs> when meaty. It, meaty. It was a meaty song. Yeah, yeah. So you're, yeah. I mean, you're a, you're a poet and you've written poems for years and a lot of people will, will know that. And, you know, obviously um, some of your poems are songs, but, but songs are different to poetry. What gives you the most pleasure? Is it... Uh, do both, in equal measure, make you feel good? Yeah, and it's funny where they come from too. Um, I, uh, uh, I've written some, a lot of them, I'm, I'm not an I love you, your eyes are blue poet. I'm more of a, a bush poet. I'm more of a storyteller, you know. But I've written, um, and, and they just sort of come from, I don't know, shall I tell you a poem? I'd love you to read a poem, please. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I was living on my boat up in Nelson, and um, there, there was, we called it living the dream, living on the boat and all that sort of stuff, you know. And um, there was a couple set off for Australia on this thing that they should never have gone to sea in, and they were never heard of again. And the woman that I was living with um, on the boat, she said, ooh, that's the dark side of the dream. Mm. So I wrote this one. The barometer is falling. It's dropping like a stone. The wind picks up with icy blasts. The sea is white with foam. And waves as big as houses loom menacingly for miles. Digging deep for courage, we try and raise a smile. Waves crash on the bowsprit. The cold winds howl and scream. And so begins the battle from the dark side of the dream. And as we crash through a wave, the wind and water force knocks the boat right over. Then things get much worse, till shuddering she writes herself. Insides are washed with stores, seems everything that's not tied down is sloshing around the floors. Clothes and books and bedding, fish hooks, bread and beans. Knee deep, we nan the hand pumps from the dark side of the dream. Then the sun that we've been seeking disappears from sight dark clouds getting darker with the onset of the night waves crash on the foredeck the forecastle hatch caves in relentlessly relentlessly the cruel sea rushes in sails shredded in the rigging a storm so wild and mean and we pray to god and heaven from the dark side of the dream <sighs> <laughs> I need to take a breath. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah. She thought it was a bit ominous and kind of and left left the boat soon after that. <laughs> <laughs> but the dark side of the dream is is such a, a perfect four words, and you mm. you put us right in the heart of that that you know what it must be like when you're at the mercy of the ocean and there's nothing you can do and it's just you and this oh it's just chilling but you write a lot of poems uh about the ocean I because do. because you're a you're a sailor and you're a pirate yeah. as well i see yeah. a bit of a pirate in the yeah, old days yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I got involved in some bad shit when at one stage there back in the old days i got involved in um in a revolution and what is now uh what was then east pakistan and uh i and I got involved in the war in Bangladesh, which uh, the, which became, and that was an absolute bloodbath. And it talk, the, we talk about genocide, and we talk about the genocide of the Jews and that sort of thing. They killed about six million Jews over four years. They killed about three million um, Bangladeshis over about four months. It was a real bloodbath. That one. Okay. But anyway, blah blah blah. Yeah, I got an. I, I've 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 had a. A rich and full life, and I'm still having it, man. I'm still having it. Have you what? You make me feel so boring, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Well, sometimes I think. Yeah, as you were. No, I, I, sometimes I think it's time for an adventure, time to do something. My my uh, my dear wife Ella is going back to Poland in a in a few days, just for a couple of months, just to see the family. We were living. 
six months, six months. After we got married, we were living sort of summer in Poland and then summer in New Zealand and going back and forwards. And um, I reckon I've had three winters this century. That's good have, might, going. That's probably why yeah. you're so happy. Yeah, but that's another trick too, you see. That is a trick. You can concentrate on being happy or you can concentrate on being sad. And it doesn't have to be, everything doesn't have to be good before you, you be happy. And, you, you know, I learn to tell myself in the mornings, I don't do it every morning, but sometimes I do. I look in the mirror and I think, Jesus, who are you and what are you doing in my bathroom? And when I get over that bit, I tell myself, you're the happiest person you know. And I just hold that thought. <laughs> and, it's, and it works. Well, it works a lot, yeah. Works a lot. But, you know, we get good times and bad times. I mean, I've had this year of shit. We all have. And we all have. And we all get it. Uh, uh. But what do you think is who you are? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. It's true. And, you know, you're right. Look yourself and <laughs> stare down that mirror. Look back at yourself and say, okay, today I choose to be happy. I, I think there's a lot, to, a lot to be said for that. And I've got X, Y, Z, and I'm just going to um, have the best day. And honestly, you, you can flip yourself out of a fug, but it takes effort. It's not easy, is it? But you can do it. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. And I do know about depression and, and all that sort of thing. You know, I mean, I've... I've I, like I say, I've had my share of it. I really have. And mm. it's, it's like that big black dog come and sits on you. Mm. But, yeah. I'm, I'm also giving myself talks before I've been on stage. I mean, I went to... I went. I played this festival not long after I'd been in Poland, just doing a solo. And um, the, it, the music before was really good. And there was this ethereal sort of a... I, th I actually think they were a Ukrainian band that were on before me. And, and they were really bloody good. And then I was going to follow them as a solo, and I thought, Jesus Christ, my bike, how am I going to do this? So I went into the, <laughs> yeah. you know, to the, into the bathroom, and I looked myself in the eye, and I gave myself a good talking to about what I was going to do when I went out there. Right. You can out there, and here, and, I, and it bloody worked, and I, it went really well. So sometimes it works, you know. Mm, power yeah. of the mind, incredible. Yeah, now, yeah. well, it, it's all between the ears, isn't it, really? Oh, it is, and uh, yeah, our minds are dangerous things. Uh, they can take over. Yeah. You've got an Aerosmith song, which really surprised me for this next oh, choice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I love it. It's a real kick-ass. <laughs> oh, so it's that, ori it's that original, the baby, please don't go, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know who wrote that, but it wasn't Aerosmith. But they got it and they wound it up. And um, I think, yeah, I think it's cool. I yep. think it's cool. Well, you said, like, if you were stuck on a desert island or something, I think, well, I'd want something to pick me up and I did. boot me around from time to time. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, and yeah. I think, was this was this Van Morrison and them? Do did they, did they do this first, maybe? I'll have a look. I'll give it the. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. I think it. I think it was. Um, I think it was one of those old black blues guys. I think that's where it came from originally. I think it might have been, you know, somebody like Muddy Waters or somebody like that. Um, I don't know. And maybe Van but the I, Man I, picked Van, up on it. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, that's what I think anyway. But you'll know. I don't. Know. I'm going to find out and confirm it at the end of the song. So let's uh, okay. play Aerosmith's cover. Baby, please don't go. <laughs> that fair rocks, doesn't it, Noel? Yeah, sure does. Rocks and all, right? Boy, yeah. it's good. Okay, That'd so wait. I got the story of the song, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to Dr. Google, uh, or Google. Uh, so Baby, Please Don't Go was written uh, in, well, and released in 35, 1935 by Big Joe Williams, Delta Blues musician. Yeah, yeah. yeah Big Joe yeah. Williams. And Van Morrison and them uh, covered it, uh, recorded it in 64. And actually, Jimmy Page mm -hmm. featured as a studio guitarist or a, a, a rhythm guitar actually for, for that uh, for that arrangement, which is which is so cool. But covered covered loads, and why wouldn't it be covered a lot? I suppose. Yeah, well, I, I just thought that they did a hell version of it, and sometimes it's good just you know for the loud rock and roll. Well, sometimes it's just what you need, isn't it, to um, power, is, power you I've, through? I've married I married this classical flutist. And she's lovely. I love her. You know, she's beautiful. But her choice in music and my taste in music are like poles apart. But I, I listen to a lot of classical music now, like every day. Every day I do. Every day I do. Whether I like it or not. Most of the time I do. 
But every now and again, I've got to go to the other extreme. And, you know, something like Eric Smith and Baby Peas don't go. That's cool. Belt something out. Yeah, but you know what it's like, Leanne. I mean, that's, that's mm. what you want to listen to now. But in an hour's time, you don't want to listen to that. You want to listen to something completely different, don't we? Well, our moods you know, change all the time, don't they? They do. They do, they do, they do. Mm. Yeah. Classical. And so what about you? Are you doing... Oh, sorry. Are you doing a lot of music? Am I ask, allowed to ask you about that? Uh, yeah, you sure. Yeah, well, um, never enough to what I'd love, like, because I kind of want to be doing it every minute, <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we certainly um, had a wonderful experience recently of recording, uh, writing, um, well, I had five original songs and I recorded them properly at a studio and that was probably, a, well, it was a huge highlight for me and, and it went really well. So now I'm waiting for them to be mastered and I just can't wait to um, get them out. So that was just wonderful. Good on you. So wonderful. Um, th- helped along by Tom Maxwell and Sam and uh, and the Kilograms yeah. and they, they played yeah. and it. Was, it was just uh, uh, epic. It was a great experience. So... That's that's sort of brewing, so I'm hoping that there'll be an EP eventually. So that's that's wonderful. Where did you record it? Uh, Sublime, in in, yeah, in Kura. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I thought of going over there. I, I need to do some more recording. I've got a lot of songs. Oh yes, recorded. you do. <laughs> you do because you know I'm getting uh, people uh, writing in and um, you know playing your songs. And Shane, the producer, is saying, "Why haven't I got Noel on Radio Central?" And it's true because. Uh, yeah, you're good, and so too right, it's, you know. It's 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 funny because I I've always thought I I can never get played on the radio in New Zealand. I get played on the radio in Poland, which is interesting. Mm. And Tui in the Rain" has been translated into Polish by one guy, and played on the radio in Polish "Tui in the Rain," which I think is kind of interesting. That's amazing. But, yeah, and there's another song that I did. Um, I did one going back to Nelson, which was about a voyage that I did from um, top of New Zealand back up to uh, to to, um, to Fiji. And in the meantime, a, a woman ran away from me. They do that a bit. Then. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> what were you? What were you doing? You scaring them off? No, 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 no. That was the same one. That was the same one with the dark side of the dream. Oh yes. Um, it just it just sounded like you know. But anyway, um, and I, I got asked to go. This band in in Poland, they asked me to come and play it with them because I'd heard it, and I went to rehearse it, and they said, no, 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 you're not playing it right. I was like, what? But I wrote this. But of course, I'm playing. No, right. well, it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> and my son Joseph said to me, actually, you know, how do you get on in Poland? And I said, fine. He said, how do they get on playing with you? And I said, fine. Why? And he said, well, you never really play the same song the same way twice. <laughs> and I, I thought, oh, well, I didn't realise I was quite, quite loose. But anyway, I am. There you go. That's, that, that's from your child, you see. They know you the best. Hey, you know what? We're yeah. coming to the end of the segment and it has been one of the best ones, I swear, hand on heart. Uh, Noel, this has oh, just it's... been the best chat, really. And I'm so... We're going to have to put this up online so others can hear it who might have missed it. But I want to go out on your song, uh, Tattoo, uh, which, which we can play now. So, yeah, we'll leave it at that and... Uh, just brilliant and stick around for a bit I'd love to see you playing live somewhere even if it's just the blue door in Arrowtown thanks Leah take care have a great have a great day oh so would I yes please (laughs) cheers Noel